Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with 100 Scarlatti Sonatas on six CDs, as performed by excellent harpsichordist Pierre Hantai um, on the Mirare label. Now, this series has been going on for quite some time, and they've boxed it all up. And I think that was really a good idea because these are lovely performances. He's a splendid artist, a wonderful keyboard artist. Um, he tends to prefer harpsichords with a, a somewhat lighter, more, I don't know, maybe you call it spindly tone. It's a very personal thing. Um, I like it. I like the elegance he brings to his performances of this music, which is not without fire or passion or anything else, but but there's a clarity to it, which I think is very, very appealing. And yeah, the notes here are really good. Um, he does not do, by the way, the 33 SRCC, you know, the original 33 sonatas that Scarlatti actually published. Um, he tends to pick and choose throughout the entire series of them with a preference, I think, toward the latter half of Scarlatti's career, the works I think he feels are the most expressive and mature. And he wrote, actually, I mean, there's an interview here that I want to read a little bit of because it's really kind of cool. Um, they ask him, "Do you, uh, will you make a complete recording of his sonatas? And I think his answer is very interesting. Now, of course, there have been marvelous recordings of the complete sonatas, but his own personal view is this. Certainly not! Ha! For one thing, it isn't an oeuvre as such. It's simply all the music written down for keyboard by this composer that scholars have been able to track down. Well, yes and no, right? Because the, these sonatas were gathered together in books that were, that were put together for, you know, his, his pupil, the Infanta Maria Barbara and whatever, and, you know, the Queen of Spain. And so, and so it is an oeuvre. Maybe not all 555. There are other ones that got scrunched in there, you know, from various sources. But, you know, several hundred of them are. So anyway, let's leave it at that. At that. Anyway, he says, um, that doesn't justify recording every note of such a frightening quantity of music. It's obvious that within this great mass, there are pieces that weren't worth it preserving weren't worth preserving for posterity. Mm -hmm. Interesting. In my view, complete cycles are more a curse than a blessing to composers because they make it tiresome and in Scarlatti's case, even impossible to listen to their music. Well, I think that's actually often quite true, isn't it? We feel the same way about big jumbo box sets, right? Of everything that these performers have done. When are you going to listen to 400 CDs of Herbert von Karajan or Arthur Rubinstein or anything like that? It's, it's your whole life. And, and when you listen to just that, doesn't that preclude you listening to other things because you only have so much time in the universe? And, and I, I think that's a really valid observation. Um, anyway, the performer must choose and choose the best and accept that no one can achieve excellence in everything. I like this guy. I really do. Much as I, I mean, I love Scott Ross's Complete Scarlatti. I think it's an astounding achievement. But they're both valid points of view. I really think they are. And I think that what thing you notice when you listen to these performances, and I, 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 I could single out individual sonatas, but, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, K480 something, or it, it, it's not meaningful, right? Because it's not like Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. He's right. You know, where, where you say, ah, the Moonlight Sonata, and everyone goes, okay, da, 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 da. We all know what it sounds like. We all know what it is. And so we can have in our minds ready to make ready comparisons. But if you, you, these are little three to five minute sniglets for the most part. And yes, some of them we have memorized, but even the ones I know by heart, that I absolutely know by heart, and there's a lot of them, I have no idea what their K number is. I really don't. And so I, I, I just find it really a very interesting observation and a helpful one. Um, and the, and I, I want to just say that they're beautiful performances. And there's one other thing he points out. He doesn't say it the way we say it, but he says it in so many words. What makes Scarlatti so special among Baroque composers? Scarlatti was a chord guy, not a line guy. Yes, he wrote the Cat's Fugue. Yes, every Baroque composer had to write things that were contrapuntal. But basically, what makes Scarlatti so special, and he talks about it extensively, and he is so right, is, is the, the, the role that color and atmosphere play in his music. Not mere linear things and how the atmosphere and the color determine the harmony. The extraordinary use of 
interesting harmony in these pieces. Folk music, partly, music of the street, urban music, Spanish music, whatever it was. You know, birds twittering, trumpets blasting. You know, he was a chord guy. He was interested in color. And the fact that he was able to realize such a vast range of color on a harpsichord, which, let's face it, is not the world's most colorful instrument, is really the essence of Scarlatti's achievement. And I think, I think, I don't know what that was. And I think that you can hear that quite clearly in these performances. And that's why I enjoy them so much. So here it is, Pierre Hantai with a couple bells in the background, uh, doing 100 Scarlatti sonatas on Mirare. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care. <laughs>